Setting up your first surround sound system can be a bit daunting. To help you out, here are 10 things you need to know about setting up your first system. Coming up. I'm Isaac, and this is Movie University. I want you all to know up front that this video is for beginners, or those who are interested in upgrading from a lower end system to a more intermediate one. The tips in this video are for those building a system in your living room, not for those building a system in their basement. So if you're looking for in-depth information on a premium end system, you're gonna to have to keep looking on YouTube. This video is for beginners. Now, if you like what you see in today's video, consider hitting the subscribe button to see more information on videos down the road. A few years back, I was starting to get into movies heavily. I didn't have the money to buy a big system that I wanted. So I bought a surround sound kit in a box which is something that most of you watching this are about to buy or are wanting to upgrade from. I had the philosophy that something is better than nothing, which it is. However, years later, I make a bit more money, so I have a nicer system. Through trial and error over the years, I've learned a few tips and tricks. Some are obvious and some aren't. I do not recommend you buy a sound bar, and I'll explain why later in the video. Here are 10 things you should know about buying your very first serious surround sound system. Number one. Patience is key and timing is everything. You don't have to break the bank to have great sound. Start keeping an eye out for those sales. Nothing is worse than buying something you've been wanting only to see it drop in price by half the following week. July 4th, Father's Day, Memorial Day, and Veterans Day are all times of the year stores will drop prices. I've bought many of my electronics refurbished or brand new on these holidays because I didn't want to wait eight months for Cyber Monday. Next to Black Friday and Cyber Monday, July 4th and Father's Day are probably the next best two holidays to buy electronics on. Number two, where are these great sales at? I buy almost all of my electronics online. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you of course get that free shipping on items, plus they always have great prices, and don't forget that Amazon warehouse section they have. However, Newegg.com, Buydig.com, DealNews.com, and SlickDeals.net are great resources to find audio equipment at fantastic prices. The sellers will generally give you free shipping and do not charge any taxes during holidays either. Number three, plan out the quality of the system you want. I think this goes without saying. In the electronics world, it's easy to go down a rabbit hole of spending tons of money to continuously have the latest and greatest. By knowing if you want an entry level, intermediate, or premium level of sound, you'll be able to budget out what you need to get. If you're watching this video, I suggest you save up $700 to be spent over the course of the next six months. Number four. The first piece I think you should narrow down is the receiver. I have a Denon AVR720W for my living room. It has outfits for 7.2 surround sound with the ability to add speakers for Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and also does full 4K video pass-through with HDR and a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. I wanted something that was going to be good for the next few years and even though I don't have the speakers for DTSX or Dolby Atmos, I wanted the ability to add them down the road without having to spend additional money. My advice for buying a receiver? Write down in two columns the items you absolutely have to have in your receiver. For instance, you wanted to have 7.2 or 5.2. It has to have 4K. And then list the features you can live without. Maybe you don't need Bluetooth or you don't need it to do uh, Zone 1 and Zone 2 audio. If you're lucky like me, I got every feature I wanted, and then some, and got a great deal on it too. The Denon AVR S20W goes for $480, but I got mine for $280 at Best Buy on Black Friday. And I didn't get up crazy early to buy it either. Number five. Now if you're about to buy a sound system out of a box, I'd recommend Samsung, Sony, or Bose. I've had friends who've had these systems, and for out of the box systems, they sound pretty good. However, if you'd like to custom build your system piece by piece, I'd recommend Polk if you're starting out. In my opinion, the Polk Monitor Series 2 offers the best bang for your buck. They have great audio, are stylish, and go on sale quite often throughout the year, and they are highly recommended by people who own them. Other great speakers I've listened to in this class are Klipsch, JBL, Onkyo, and Pioneer. They're not as cheap as Polk, but they all sound good for the price you're going to pay. These systems do come in kits, but I've never seen those at a good price. If you're wanting great cinematic sound in your living room, do not buy a sound bar. To me, sound bars are like 3D. It's a gimmick to sell the consumer technology that isn't tried and proven yet. 
Sun bars are great for a bedroom or if you just want a little bit extra audio quality than your TV speakers. But if you're serious about sound, you need separate speakers placed throughout the living room. A sound bar cannot replicate that sound by simply bouncing sound around a room, no matter how lifelike a company tells you their sound bar sounds like. Sound bars are most definitely better than the speakers built into a TV, but they are nothing compared to a 5.1 system. Number six. Probably the most important speaker in your collection is going to be the center speaker. Like some other areas of the setup, this might be one of those areas that's wise to spend a few extra dollars. The reason being, most of your audio is going to come from the center channel with supporting audio coming from the side and rear channels. Contrary to what a lot of people getting into surround sound believe, Surround sound doesn't mean that the sound from the video comes through every speaker at once, but rather, sound is coming from where it is needed. If two people are talking on screen, but one is in frame and one is off and to the right, the center channel is going to give you the sound from the person in frame, and your right speaker will give you the sound from the person just off screen. When you do finally get your system, be sure to calibrate each speaker by measuring distance and height to get the best sound. Number seven, wires and cables. The rule of thumb with wires for speakers is the lower the gauge, the thicker the wire, the more power that goes to your speaker. The more power there is, the louder and clearer the sound is going to be. I'd recommend using 16 gauge or lower wire for wiring your system from receiver to the speaker itself. Be forewarned that if you want to go in depth and research speaker wire, that you're going to open Pandora's box with a slew of knowledge about ohms, resistance, and other terms. If you're going to be wiring inside a wall, it's probably worth your while to pony up the extra dollars and buy 12 gauge wires so that you don't have to pull them out in the future and rewire when you do upgrade your speakers down the road. However, if you're like me and you're trying to get good sound at a good price, you'll be fine with 16 gauge wire. Be sure to check if your subwoofer needs a different cable than your normal speakers. A mistake I made when building my system. Number eight, when you set up the speakers in your living room, be sure to see if there is any way you can dampen bouncing sound waves. A big rug on a wooden floor, multiple couches, and closing curtains can all have an effect to improve the acoustics in your living room when watching a movie. Bouncing sound waves can distort audio during loud sequences. Speaker spacing is also very important. If possible, try to keep your speakers away from the walls and corners as the sound will bounce around. Two to three feet is ideal. But again, if you're watching this, the speakers are going to be in the living room and moving them away from the wall is just not doable for houses. Number nine, crossover frequencies. You don't want sound coming out of your front speakers to be dampened or canceled out by your side or bass speakers. In your settings, set your speakers up as small. Even though there is an option for large, they're not actually that big in the speaker world. You can set your center speaker a little higher, around 150 hertz, or higher than that if you want all that power to go to your subs in your front speakers. However, you can make it a little easier on yourself and do 80 hertz for your front, center, and surround. The bass should be set around 120 hertz as this is a specification for Blu-ray disc. Number 10. When talking about surround sound systems, what do all those numbers mean? 5.1, 7.1, 1, 7.2. The first number is the amount of regular speakers you have. This would be your center, your fronts, and your surround speakers. The second number is the subwoofer. Most conventional receivers have outputs for one, but some can do two, and you can rig another receiver or amplifier to your system to add even more subwoofers. The third number is relatively new to home media. It is the amount of speakers above you. These new speakers are for the DTS and Dolby Atmos systems. You'll notice I said I have a 5.2 system. That means I have a second base in the living room. When you get the chance, I suggest you save up money for a second base. It makes all the difference in the world. Now for a bonus tip. Which movie should you use to demo that sweet surround sound system you just bought? Interstellar, Star Trek Into Darkness, or Star Trek Beyond, The Dark Knight, WALL-E, Pacific Rim, Hacksaw Ridge, John Wick Chapter 2, or Transformers Dark of the Moon all have great surround sound built into them. Most of these are in the 4K format, with a few still only on Blu-ray. Depending on which you show, you can also show off your TV in addition to giving a demo of that new sound system. Let me know in the comment section below if I saved you a headache by making this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on your way out. I'm Isaac, and this is Movie University.